Hi everybody, I'm Jim Skelly and this is the Global Conversation. It's the eighth mini lecture for the spring semester 2012. Um, I hope, I see that many of you are back on the website. I'm terribly sorry about what seems to have happened the last couple of days. At the end of last week, um, apparently, um, someone or something messed with our um, website and um, the course was not available for a couple of days. I'm terribly sorry about it. We'll try to monitor it more closely. Um, we hope that it isn't somebody who's, shall we say, disgruntled, um, although there are lots of things to be disgruntled about. But I'm glad to see that uh, we've had a rush of activity now um, <clears throat> today and, and yesterday. So uh, I hope you're coming along with your Learning Circle projects. If any of you are still having difficulty, and I think some people have been having difficulty um, uh, getting into the website, please let me or Sadie know as soon as possible, okay? Uh, we want to help sort it out as quickly as we can. Um, <clears throat> I've been um, I've been traveling quite a bit. Um, I was at a, a couple of seminar a seminar and a conference in Colorado, and you know um, I have to tell you, everybody, you know humans are strange. Let's be clear, humans are very very strange. They think short term, of course, most of us do most of the time. But in many of the issues that we're facing into, we shouldn't be doing that we should be thinking longer term. So everyone that I've met lately has said, oh, isn't it great the warm weather is here? Even here in Derry, it's been incredibly beautiful spring warm days, which is unnatural. Hmm? I say unnatural in the sense that this shouldn't be happening so much. A week ago, a little over a week ago, I was in Colorado and um, the temperature just let me take a look at my notes here as, uh, as we're talking about this. Um, <clears throat> the temperature went to 77 degrees on St. Patrick's Day, and I think St. Patrick probably had very little to do with it, uh, although there was some heat around um, uh, Guinness, I think it was. But nonetheless, that's how many degrees? Let me see what the, the report says. It's 42 degrees above average. Now, everybody loves it, you know? Oh, it's finally it's warm. But it's not finally it's warm. It's that it's getting warmer sooner and sooner. And it's really worrying. If it's, you know, 77 degrees in the middle of March, what's it going to be in the middle of July? And that's a question you better ask yourself. Because, in fact, we're getting more and more extreme weather events. Um, the people who study climate know that this is um, something that uh, uh, is happening more and more. Uh, Bill McKibben, the environmentalist whose uh, work we um, keep handy for the end of the semester, who talks about citizen activism and what you can do, Bill McKibben reports that there were six or seven straight days at O'Hare Airport in Chicago when the temperature reached 80 degrees last week. I mean, come on, that's crazy, man. You know, and, and you know, we know that uh, lots of people, people who are a bit frail, shall we say, older people, children, etc., are going to really suffer from this. So connect the dots. That's what we need to do. I've become absolutely fierce about the need for education, for paying attention to what's going on in our world, and trying to do something about it. Um, last year uh, was the 11th hottest on record, uh, and uh, the last decade is probably, according to those who study such matters, um, the warmest for a millennium. That's a thousand years, fun seekers. And it's, um, it's very, very worrying. There's a new study out that is, says essentially extreme weather events are increasing. And, and we all know it. We see devastating tornadoes, um, say nothing of these heat waves. Um, Russia had um, last year the hottest summer, uh, the year before 2010, they had the hottest summer uh, since 
the year 1500. Huh? Uh, we've seen the worst flooding in Pakistan's history. So more and more of this. Connect the dots, okay? Uh, and what's really worrying to me, uh, I have to say, is that we don't seem to have the political leadership that is going to address this. Um, one of the things that I always become passionate about um, uh, when I'm confronted with um, the level of knowledge in our favorite country, the United States, is we really need uh, education. We really need to stop this uh, stupidity that seems to have um, come to the fore everywhere uh, and has entered public discourse to a degree that um, um, I have never seen in my life. You know, there is um, one of the slogans of the party in George Orwell's novel, 1984, is ignorance is strength, right? There is a way in which our current system, if you will, not a very good way to describe it perhaps, but let's just say that for now. The current system wants people to be ignorant. So let me suggest to you that your task as a human on this planet is to educate yourself as much as possible. And I say that because when you hear the political leadership in the United States talking about climate change, you will die. I mean, you just want to just jump off a bridge or something. Listen to Santorum. As Bill McKibben says, um, uh, Santorum probably takes the prize. We think he may not be the United States president uh, in the coming election, but you never know. George Bush made it. Um, uh, when he was asked about global warming a couple of weeks ago, um, uh, uh, he was campaigning with, of course, a piece of shale rock to underscore his commitment to endless drilling for oil. His response, is, his response was, quote, the dangers of carbon dioxide? Tell that to a plant. How dangerous carbon dioxide is. In other words, you know, plants live on carbon dioxide. Isn't it wonderful? Um, but our world, uh, with an excess of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases, is under threat. Uh, and it's this kind of willful ignorance, uh, especially as it affects public policy, that really has to be challenged. Um, uh, as McKibben points out, Mitt Romney, the other uh, leading uh, Republican Party contender for the presidency, has said, uh, scientists will figure out 10, 20, 50 years from now, if in fact humans are a significant cause of global warming. And as McKibben says, in fact, 50 years from now, computer models predict this kind of March weather will be nothing abnormal, and summer will be, if not exactly hell, then a remarkably similar temperature. Obama, however, did uh, make some mention of it, even though his actual record isn't that great on this. He does seem to recognize that climate change is real. Um, at a fundraiser last week, he mentioned that, uh, let's see, what, what exactly did he say? It gets you a little nervous about what is happening to global temperatures when it is 75 degrees in Chicago in the beginning of March, you start thinking, well, it's about time that everybody start thinking. Um, the extreme weather, uh, as, um, as I've noted, is, uh, is, is becoming quite extraordinary. Um, <clears throat> uh, last year, the 11th hottest on record. So uh, things are getting, things are going, you know, not getting great. And there's, there's um, more and more problem, of course, with droughts. And um, there's a bunch of information. Last week uh, was World Water Day because we're using a lot of water and unnecessarily so. For those of you who like Coca-Cola, for example, Every liter of Coca-Cola requires three liters of, uh, of water to make it. So the United Nations had World Water Day um, last week on the 22nd, um, and uh, hopefully some people are starting to, to recognize the connection between 
our basic life, uh, and especially with regard to food security, because we think that uh, more and more people are going to be facing droughts. And when you think about what happens, how, how water is used, uh, and how much of it is used when you think about, uh, for example, beef, for example, enormous amounts of water are required to make to make a pound of beef requires about 7,000 liters uh, of, um, of water. That's a lot of water. And uh, to satisfy your daily needs, it takes about 3,000 liters of water. It's renewable, of course, but it's, uh, it is a finite resource. Um, and our population has been growing, of course. And, uh, you know, the consequence is that we're going to have a greater and greater need for water. So, um, I hope everything's going well for you uh, in the learning circles. The learning circle projects are uh, due in just over three weeks. I hope you're all making progress on it. Please check in with your um, teaching assistant uh, or Sadie or me if there are any difficulties. Um, we do hope that everyone now is participating. As you know, we did some reorganization of the learning circles uh, to ensure that the people who were in the circles were actually participating, um, uh, and we hope that that's all going well now. Uh, please be in touch, and I'll be talking to you again uh, in the next week or so. All the best.